Now, on problem number 17, we have Monica correctly solved the equation x squared minus 4x equal to 2 by completing the square. So we're going to have to complete the square as well. Which equation is part of our solution? Now, to complete the square, to complete means that we need to be able to add something in order for it to become a square. If you guys notice, in this case, the x is out on the left and the number is already placed on the right. So they've done the first step for us. So the only thing that we have to do, x squared minus 4x. We are going to leave some space. And the 2 is already on the other side. Remember, what we add on one side, we need to add to the other side. Now, the formula for completing the square is b over 2 squared. But we can just do it very quickly in our head. We just basically take half of negative 4, which is negative 2, and then we square. So negative 2 squared is positive 4. Remember, if you add positive 4 here, you need to have a positive 4 on the right. You need to add the same thing on both sides. From here, we're going to go and factor it. On the right-hand side, we end up with a 6. Factors of x squared will be x and x. Factors of 4 will be 2 and 2. And they both have to have the same sign for it to be positive 4. But they need to add up to a negative number, so they both have to be negative. From here, we have two of them exactly the same. So we have x minus 2 squared equal to 6. So we added something in order to be able to have a square. Therefore, our answer in this case, it's already there, will be verse letter B. If we want to solve, we can just take the square root on both sides, then move the 2 to the right. Let's continue on problem number 18. Which of the following graphs is wider? If it's wider than 5 over 6, this graph right here. Now, I'm going to make a quick graph, just like we've done in class. Or you can use some another graph that's on the side. So if we you can also use this graph right here on the right. But for now, we have this graph. We have 5 over 6. Remember, it's up, rise over run. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to do it on the opposite side. And I'm looking for one that is wider. So let's say this one is, even though it's negative, we're going to place it up into the right so we can compare. Up 7 to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Is that one wider? No. If you notice, this one's going to be narrow. We have up 3 to the right 7. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here we go. So there's one that is wider. Now, if we do the next one, just double check. Up 2 to the right 1, 1, 2 to the right 1, it's not going to be wider. It's going to be slightly narrow. So your answer will be letter C. For problem number 19, they tell us if i is equal to the square of negative 1, what is the value of i to the 10? Now, they give you the following definition. You have to remember that that is not a definition that helps us right away to find the solution. But we can take the square root on both sides, the square root and the square root cancels. So we end up with the first definition that we need, i squared is equal to negative 1, correct? The square root and the square root cancel. If you square both sides, that will become i to the 4. And if you square negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 becomes positive 1. So those are the two definitions that we're going to be using to answer this question. i to the 10. How many i to the 4s do we have in here? 2, 1, 2. How many i's are left? <coughs> 2. Anything else? No. i to the 4th is 1. i to the 4th is 1. 
high to the second is negative one. Notice that there are no i's left by themselves, so I know c in d is not an answer. You multiply one times one times negative one, your answer is negative one. So you answer d. If there was an i by itself, then we know that there's going to be c or d. But in this case, it does not. Problem number 20. They give the definition for i. If i is equal to square root of negative 1, which point shows the location of the subtraction of two complex numbers? Because there's a minus in between, we're going to distribute the negative number. Once we distribute the negative number, we no longer have parentheses. The parentheses, we needed them because we have a minus in between. So negative times negative becomes a positive 2. Negative times ne positive is negative 3i. From here, many of you guys are very tempted to distribute, but we just need to combine like terms much easier. If there was nothing in between, then we needed to distribute. But in this case, there's a minus. I mean, we need, we'll need to FOIL. In this case, there's a minus, so we just distribute the negative one and then combine like terms. That will give me negative 2 and minus 6i. This is just like graphing a point. Instead of the x and y, we have the real imaginary. So that means we're going to go left 2 on the real and then down 6 on the imaginary. So 2 and down 6, so point B. Let's continue to problem number 21. What are the x-intercepts? They're asking you guys for the x-intercepts. You have to remember. How do I find the x-intercepts? You let y equal to 0. From here, I need to solve for x, so I can do different things. I can use a quadratic formula, but just by looking at the answer, we know that's going to be much easier to factor. Factors of 5x squared will be 5x, and next, factors of 8 <coughs> will be 8 and 1, or 2 and 4. I need to end up with a negative 3 once I FOIL, so I'll use 8 and 1. I'm going to make that a positive and this a negative. Because that will give me positive 5x. That will give me negative 8x. If I add them together, it gives me negative 3x. And that matches. From here, it's equal to 0. Because they're multiplying and equal to 0, I can use my zero product property. That will tell me that one of them, or both, will be equal to 0 in order for this statement to be true. It will be 5x minus 8 equal to 0, x plus 1 equal to 0. Move the 8 to the right becomes a positive, and then divide by 5. Gives me x equal to 8 over 5. Move the 1 to the right becomes a negative. Be very careful for when you select the answer. Sometimes it looks very similar, so your answer is letter D. Problem number 22. What system of inequalities represent the graphs, the graph below? On the first one, we have a, which you can barely see, it's a horizontal line. Remember, we have X and Y, vertical and horizontal. Horizontal means it's going to be Y is equal to a number. In this case, it's going to be 1, 2. And we have an inequality, and they shaded the lower side, so I'll be less. So we're going to shade the low side or the top side. The low side less than or the top side. In this case, they shade the low side, so I'll be y is less than. So your answer is not a, and it's not d. On the second equation, your y-intercept is 2, so we have y mx plus b. Your y intercept is positive 2. Your slope is up 3 to the right 1. So it'll be 3 over 1 or just 3. And they just shade the top of the bottom. They shaded the top. Right? They did not shade the bottom. So I'll be greater than. Therefore, your answer is letter B. Problem number 23. 
what is c squared minus c minus 5? There's nothing in between. That means that they're multiplying c plus 2. We're going to multiply. You need to distribute this times both. You need to distribute the c, negative c times both, and then the negative 5 times both. So let's go and write it out. Just be careful when you write everything out. Just try to do it nice and neat if possible. c squared times c will give me c to the cube. c squared times 2 gives me positive 2 c squared. Negative c times c is negative c squared. Negative c times 2 is negative 2. I still need to distribute the negative 5 times the c and the negative 5 times the 2. So we have to distribute each one of them. So it gives me negative 5c and negative 2. From here I can combine my like terms. And yes, I did forget c. Wait, sorry for that. So from here I can combine my like terms. Combine those two. And then I'll combine those two. That will give me c to the third power. 2c minus 1c is positive 1c squared. Minus 7c minus 10. Be very careful, all of them look very similar, so I know it's not this one, and it's not this one, and letter A will be the answer. Problem number 24. We have a long division. So let's see if it fits right here. We have 4x to the 4th plus 14x to the 3rd plus 12, 2x squared minus 2x plus 35 divided by 2x plus 5. We're just going to divide it just like we've done divided whole numbers throughout middle school and elementary. First, it's the same process. What do I need to multiply 2x to get 2x to the 4th? That will give me 2x to the third. 2, 2x and 2x, 2x and 2x to the third will give me 2x to the fourth. Then you need to multiply by both of them. Remember, you need to multiply by both. Some of you guys just multiplied by the first one, and that's the main mistake that you guys made. 2x to the third times 2x gives me 2x to the fourth. 2x to the third times 5 gives me positive 10x to the third. Now we need to subtract or just change the sign. That will cancel. It gives me 4x to the third. Bring down the next number. Plus 2x squared. So far so good. So it's a good idea to be able to guide yourself through the answers. Because if you make a mistake, you can right away see they made a mistake and you can fix it right away. Let's see. Let's continue. What do I need to multiply 2x to get 4x to the third? So 2 times 2, so it'll be positive 2. I have 1x and I need 3, so it'll be x squared. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply by both of them. Gives me 4x to the third. 2x squared times 5 gives me positive 10x squared. And we are going to subtract. That becomes a negative. That becomes the opposite cancels, so it gives me 2x squared, and we're going to bring down the next number, minus 2x. And we'll continue with the same process. What do we need to multiply 2x to get 2x to the second? And let's see, before we start, we'll continue. If you notice, this is positive 2x squared, so I know it's not letter C, because that's negative, or letter B. So those two are correct. So what do I need to multiply 2x to get 2x to the second will be positive 1x. And notice that it's positive 1x, but the next ones are 8x. So I know that I made a mistake. Right? That's 1x, but the next answers are 4x. So let's see, what did I do wrong? You guys see my mistake? Yes, right here. 2x squared minus 10x should be negative 8x. So what do I need to multiply 2x to get negative 8x squared? That'll be negative 4x. So I can cancel letter. 
No, they're both correct so far. Is this wrong? No. So let's multiply it out. Negative 4x times 2x will be negative 8x squared. Negative 4x times positive 5 gives me negative 20x. I draw the line, and I change my signs. That becomes a positive. That becomes a positive as well. That will cancel. That will give me 18x, and I bring down the next number, which is positive 35. So what do I need to multiply? 2x to get 18x. That will be positive 9. If you notice, they're both positive 9, so we're in the right track. 9 times 2x will give me 18x. 9 times 5 will give me positive 45. Now I'm going to subtract or add by changing the opposite. That gives me negative 10. Negative 10 is my remainder, so it'll be minus 10 and over the divisor, which is 2x plus 5. Therefore, my answer, they look very similar, so my answer is A, just because this is minus, and it corresponds to your answer.